Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True and welcome back to Total War Three Kingdoms. Well, last time, we did a pretty good job expanding the Empire, conquering some territories, buying others. I like being Kong wrong, and in particular, I like just having a giant pile of food and basically telling people they have no choice but to hand over their land to me, otherwise I will let them starve to death. It's beautiful. But uh, things are going to be a little bit more on the tricky side today. You see, we may have successfully just smashed a whole bunch of Sao Sao's territory while he wasn't actually expecting us to attack, but now we start reaching his big cities. And I don't actually know where his armies are right now. I've lost visibility of them. They could be anywhere. And there's one other small tiny problem I've noticed, which is, uh, Gon Sun Zhang appears to have a fairly significant army up north, next to my economic heartland, which is currently completely unguarded. A thing I was specifically worried about and then didn't actually provide sufficient cover for. Well, I provided a bit of cover, but, uh, this is a bit of a problem. So right now, this guy can't actually make it to Tai Shan, because, yeah, crossing the river is a very slow process. I think he needs to, like, spend one turn going onto the river, the next turn coming off it again, so... I don't think he can get to my cities immediately, but when he does make it to my cities, they are guarded but not spectacularly. They all have walls, and both Dong and Tai Shan do have administrators. So as a result of that, there's a commander, they've got some troops. Not much in the way of troops, and I can't actually use money to supplement that garrison, but I did have a plan. Alright, I've got a plan here, which is, I haven't actually done this yet, but you can spend money to rush a building that's under construction. It's expensive, but you can do it. So right now, this territory, Taishan, is about to become a level 5 settlement. Screw it, I'm going to do that immediately, because that opens up a brand new slot. Very, very nice indeed. So... I may or may not wish to actually build some patrols here in order to get even more garrison set up. We'll look at that in a second because first I need to figure out how I'm going to deploy my armies. Because right now all my armies are down south. We've got our brand new vanguard down over here. He's still training up so I can't really rush him over there because he's still actually mustering. Then I've got, yeah, a force of two decent sized armies right here. They're at full strength so I could put them into force march mode and get them up north in a hurry. They're not bad, but they're not great either. They'll do. But of course, if I do that, that means that Kong Rong's army is all on its own. So, I don't know whether I want to try and fight a war on the very southern frontier of my empire at exactly the same time as there's one going on on the very north as well. That strikes me as very, very dangerous indeed. But I don't want the borders to be as they are right now. Because if the borders are left as they are right now... I've got two farms on the very southern tip of my empire, and farms are extremely vulnerable. No walls, no towers. It doesn't work, it's just not good enough. Kong Rong must go and try and make the Yangzhou business work, alright? We've got no choice, so he's going to go and do that immediately. City goes under siege. Problem is, this city has a garrison. Not a great garrison, but it's there. I could just walk straight in... I'll take losses, significant losses in fact, but I could do it, and uh, oh dear. This place has actually got Bastion Artillery set up, right. So, uh, that's interesting, they're going to actually have trebuchets up on the walls. I'm not sure if that's two because they've actually got the garrison building built, because I swear I've actually attacked level 5 cities before and not seen two Bastion Artillery, so I'm not sure what actually causes that to exist. I'm going to assume it's yeah, the garrison off this guy. On the plus side, their supplies are very low, and their supplies are low because I took their farms away from them, so uh, they've been eating into their supplies. Continue the siege for now, but we may choose to attack immediately. We'll have to see about that. Until I've taken the city, I've got very poor visibility of the surrounding empire. Sao Sao could be literally just down the road. Okay, what I think I'm going to do here is, uh, I'm going to put this army of the genius Mi Heng into force march mode... Uh, and get it moving north in a hurry. Alright, I want something up there, because unfortunately, yeah, I didn't see that army coming, and it might not necessarily be alone, because even though I've got spies up north, they've got very poor visibility, because both of them have been promoted to generals, which kind of doesn't actually help me, because it means that, yeah, they lose the general visibility of being in court, so uh, that's kind of worked against me on this occasion. But yeah, we need to get this army back up north in a hurry. So, force march mode, please. How far can you guys get immediately? Because what I need you to do is, yeah, just get up here, straight away, and... Uh, okay, 
It's not great. It's not spectacular, in fact, no. As for you, stay where you are for the time being. There's no point you rushing north. You're weak. You need more time to muster anyway. So uh, leave him right here, especially as uh, I'm suspicious of Yan Shu. And honestly, I'm becoming increasingly suspicious of Liu Dai. Because comments have been made to the effect that, yeah, I'm probably not actually his factionary anymore. He's probably just named a new one. So just leave this guy right here, just to make sure that Yan Shu doesn't get any stupid ideas. Though yeah, if we're lucky, maybe Yan Shu and Liu Dai will actually weaken each other in a big battle. That'd be lovely. And if Yan Shao would like to get involved, that'd be great, because once I was super suspicious of Yan Shao, but now Yan Shao is great, and if he'd like to attack Gon Sun Zhang, that'd be magnificent actually, that'd be really useful. The question is, I've got the money, do I want to try and raise a brand new army over here in Taishan. It'll be weak, but it'll just help slow him down a bit. Hang on, what do we know about this army? Not much. We don't know anything about the commanders, how good they are. That guy's 59, so he's probably been a commander for a while. I'm suspicious he might be very good. Fair bit of melee shock cavalry, plenty of G militia, plenty of stuff around level 1 to 3. Some experienced archers mind, but nothing too major. Handful of shields, a fairly well-rounded army to be honest, no glaring weaknesses. Now there is actually one person who could be very, very useful right now. And that's Guao Si, my former spy, who actually comes with a decent sized garrison straight up. That's not bad at all. The problem is he's currently off doing an assignment, so it's going to take me a turn to recall him. So honestly, I may as well just hire someone else and then just train more troops. That'd be faster. It is kind of a shame though, there's no good candidates floating around right now. I would like some more candidates ideally. But then again, this Gui Yanji guy who's just shown up, that's pretty good authority, actually. What's going on there? Charismatic plus 12. That's a really good trait for a commander right there. Together with trustworthy, not bad. Resolve up by 12 too. Actually, you've not got bad stats for a level 2. You're not bad. You're not bad at all. Now, you might be a spy sent by Gon Sun Zhang. That's possible. Or you might just have got bored at Gon Sun Zan's house and you decided to come and visit mine, but this is a bit of a risk. Alright, I'm not 100% sure on hiring this guy. Like, having an actual general lead an army against the guy who possibly sent him to infiltrate my faction seems like a bad idea in many ways. But short of pulling one of my administrators off their job, there's not much more I can do. Screw it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually raise a champion, because they do have a vanguard, so champions should be able to deal with vanguards. This guy's currently administrator. I'm going to call him up. He's going to help me with the fighting. So we'll put him back to being an administrator after he's done. There we go. So he just gets in there, goes and hangs out in Tai Shin. Lovely. And now we just need to, yeah, recruit a little bit more, please. So what's my garrison missing? It's got a bit of cavalry. It's got plenty of archers. We just need more frontline troops, gotcha. So we'll just give you some basic frontline troops. In fact, actually, basic G militia would not be the worst thing in the world. Those are super cheap. We'll break all this down after we're done. I just need as many bits of infantry on the ground as possible, as fast as possible, to protect Taishin while the reinforcements are on their way. And I'm also just going to build this military infrastructure. It doesn't cost that much, that's absolutely fine. And I can't afford to instant construct it, but it will be done next turn anyway. So that'll be another four damaged units that'll slowly start growing over time. That's probably for the best. Now this guy could make his way over to Dong, but if he does, that's fine. That just means he's moving towards my army. So uh, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about Gon Sun Zhang's invasion. Now I just need to deal with Cao Cao, who could be just around the corner. That's entirely possible. Actually, I've got one other thing I could call upon. So, Liu Bei, me and you need to have a chat with each other about becoming, yeah, formal military allies. That, that would work right there. Because then, I might be able to pull you in and maybe use your army on the Yellow River to take out Gon Sun Zhang. And he will absolutely vote for it, 100%. And congratulations, me and him are now military allies. Okay, so he's already at war with Gon Sun Zhang. But now that we're allies, we've got proper war coordination targets. Lovely. And I would like you, ideally, to, yeah, take out this guy, if at all possible. So, 
if you wouldn't mind bringing this very convenient army you've got over here back to assassinate this army for me, that'd be really bloody convenient. Ah, uh, yes, no, I was actually given a mission to do that, like, bloody ages ago, so I do get myself a little bit of public order and population growth for that. Marvellous. And my next mission is to destroy Yun Shao. I'm not destroying Yun Shao, I like Yun Shao. He's the one guy who hasn't backstabbed me so far. He seems pretty cool, and he's got a really nice hat. I mean, if need be, I could just tell Gonsun Zhang to naff off. I feel like, actually, hang on. How much would you theoretically want? Ooh, okay. Peace is only minus nine for that guy. So I might be able to naff off if the war gets too hot. But I'd rather not. I'd rather beat one of his armies first. Because if I cripple an army, he'll potentially need to pay me for the peace. Ooh, and I've just spotted something else very nice down south. So Kong Zhao, who basically I don't know anything about. He just owns a bit of farmland. I might take off him at some point. He actually has a spare trade route. And so do I. So how about me and you have a nice trade monopoly, and you're going to pay me to have that trade monopoly, actually. That'd be spot on. Actually, he really hates giving me money. So you know what? That's fine. We'll just have the trade monopoly. So that's another R671 oh, gold to turn to me. Spot on. Right now, I'm making as much money through diplomacy and trade combined as I am through taxation. Love it. Right, time to see how many people are about to attack me, because... Uh, it might be a few on any chance you're about to. Oh, that's another army of Gonsun Zhang. Right, okay, Gonsun Zhang is invading in big, big amounts. This is now scary. And Dongmin wants a non-aggression pact. No, you don't get that. I might want to go to war with you with Liu Bei soon. Sorry. And Zhang Yan has declared war on me. Right, this just sort of happens over time, because as I get bigger, I get more threatening. So... That's a little bit on the concerning side. I'm just going to acknowledge that. Thanks for letting me know. But in all fairness, I could just let Liu Bei take care of this. Yeah, we're military allies now. So, uh, yeah, congratulations. You don't have to deal with Liu Bei. And Kong Zhao has just died. So that faction no longer exists. Instead, we've got ourselves Tong Yu Rui. So, actually, I think you might be about to cease to exist. I think Yun Shu just took you out. And, yeah, you were immediately destroyed, actually. That was a thing. So, there we go. We managed to join a war against... I didn't join a war against him. Liu Bei joined the... Never mind. Anyway, there's a war going on. And, uh, yeah, there's there's problems everywhere right now, aren't there? Yes, yes, there are. Okay, so where's that army right now? It's on the river for the time being. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change my target for my allies uh, to this guy over here. Because... Uh, this guy over here is arguably more dangerous. I've got some good coverage over here now. I'm really tempted to just pay him off at this point. I kind of just want him to go away. As for Yang Zhu, however, that place is, yeah, run out of supplies. That is now going to start suffering attrition. Has it already kicked in or is it next turn that actually happens? It's next turn, meaning the garrison might come out and fight. And during winter, that works for me. I've got the ranged advantage. I really don't want to move into that city during winter, because then I'd have to walk up to the walls incredibly slowly through the snow. That would cost me a lot of casualties. Okay, back to diplomacy. Uh, Liu Bei, um, I've actually just changed my target, please. Uh, change target to, yeah, uh, Gonsun Zhang's army itself. Please take that out for me. You've got an army literally right there. I don't know whether it can win, but it can certainly soften him up a bit. Now, this army is now floating on the river, and yeah, hang on, this army can make it to Taishan next turn, but it might be planning to head over here to the trade port. The trade port is uh, fairly well defended. Plenty of swordsmen, plenty of archers. Uh, it won't be able to win, but it'll be able to give them one hell of a fight. The question is, where the hell should this guy be going at this point? Because, uh, you know what? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How good is Gongsun Zan's army. Oh, that's pretty good. That's his veterans. Those guys have all got experience. That's crossbows. That is... Uh, that's a worry. That's actually very worrying right there. It's going to take him a while to get over the river, but that is... that's a concern. Right, you... Head over in... Yeah, just head over in this direction, to be honest. Join up with my actual vanguard. Form a proper army before we do anything else. Ah, yes, of course. We've actually just lost the trade with Kong Zhao because Kong Zhao no longer exists, so that's not good. On the plus side, though, Taishan is looking good. 
We've now got ourselves, yeah, even more troops floating around here. So there's like, yeah, two thirds of an army just making up the garrison. Combined with another third of an army right there. So we have a decent number of troops here. Some of his troops are at half health. Some of them are a little bit on the badly damaged side. Two strategists is not a good thing, especially as they've only got two missile units between them. Sorry, three missile units. That's not very much, to be honest. This is a weirdly composed army, actually, yes. But it's these guys that worry me. Though then again, actually, should these guys worry me? Because these guys right here, they've probably had to march from over here, and it's winter right now. Their supplies are going to start running short at some point, which is exactly what happened to Yan Shao when he tried to get down to Cao Cao. He ran out of supplies. And you, you've got yourself one strategist right there, but other than that, how smart are you really? Not very smart at all. Your supplies are going to start running out at some point. Okay, I think there's actually a decent chance we might be able to starve out both of these people. They've had to march a long way. They're still marching right now. They've just had to go through winter. We might actually be doing okay here. We might be doing all right. Just play the long game, fall back, wait them out. They're going to start suffering from attrition sooner or later. Probably before I do. And as I'm starting to just get a little bit nervous here, yeah, over here in Yingshun, let's just actually get the actual patrols upgraded to a guard post. Because once that gets to level 3, at that point, they actually get a big pile of more garrison. And uh, this place just feels vulnerable to attack from various angles. So uh, I'd like to have it a bit better defended just in case. And as for Yang Zhao, we need to attack in spring, I think. Unless, of course, they're about to attack me. If we're very lucky, they're about to launch an attack on me. And what's Liu Bei gonna do? Please, Liu Bei. Liu Bei, help me out here. Oh yes! Liu Bei totally just attacked that guy. Liu Bei attacked Don Sun Zhang. And yes, as I suspected, the garrison is coming out. Now, that makes life much easier, because even if Cao Cao's just around the corner, now he won't have reinforcements. Good. And in snow, the advantage is very much ours. That's something Creative Assembly should probably modify, by the way. I understand that they wait till their supplies are done, then they come out rather than starve. But if the turn they're going to start starving is winter, then in some ways it might be better if they came out the turn before, so they don't have to be the attacker during winter. Because being the attacker during winter is a massive disadvantage. Okay, now this is just the battlefield I wanted to see. Massive and flat and open. My trebuchets can basically just pick them off as they're coming. This is lovely. And don't forget, Kong Rong these days is a mobile artillery platform. So we should actually use them on the flanks sensibly. Here we go. They should be momentarily, if not already, inside. There we go. Already inside trebuchet range. Absolutely love it. So yeah, focus on the not damaged units, if at all possible, please. And yeah, focus firepower on the center. So even if you actually miss slightly, you'll still hit something. And get the cavalry riding out here. Oh, that's a bunch of good hits. Yeah, just get the cavalry riding out. Stay out of range of their bows if we can. Then we just get around the side. Ah, cavalry's on that side. Pull the horses back over here, because they'll try and intercept my cavalry. This small cavalry group's going to have to do the job for the time being in that case. And some big hits from the trebuchet right there. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Not quite in range yet. Crossbow should... There we go. Crossbow's about to start firing. This is good. And then we just, yeah, get my cavalry around the side over here. Looks to me like actually all the cavalry is on this front. Oh, just look at that. Look at the pile of bodies off the trebuchets. That is just sexy. Sexy as anything right there. Now, in which case, yeah, we got ourselves... Uh, we got ourselves a handful of cavalry over here. Quite a few cavalry, actually. Uh, some of you guys, uh, change your attention over to the cavalry, if you'd be so kind. And our general needs our aid. Which general needs our aid? Ah, probably the champion, who's currently on the front line. Honestly, I think he's probably fine, to be honest. In fact, yeah, he should probably just charge forward and get on with it. And you should do the same. Get around the side, start just hitting these guys in the flank. But we should be mostly okay. Cavalry, get round over here, start just doing the flanking action. But yeah, these guys are going to be slow. My cavalry do have reduced speed right here. Still, we can chase some of these guys off. And I'd say, at this point, archers and spears, just do what you can against those cavalry. Those cavalry do not want to engage spearmen, but that's exactly what they're about to engage. Good. 
everyone else is just taking out these guys. And now you just start focusing on these guys. Lay down the big hit. You chase off these guys. These guys can't possibly have too much more. These guys are Get out of here. Get round the outside. That's absolutely fine. There's time to break and fall apart. My spear's doing a good job. Yeah, we're taking minimal casualties here, and that's what I wanted to see. Catapult still has a handful of shots here, so just start laying down some fire on their arches if you can. Just keep them a bit busy. Actually, this over here is better. My cavalry is handling this right here. My own archers still have a little bit of firepower. We should be okay. You guys get over here, chase them off. Oh, just look at that. They're melting. They're absolutely being torn to shreds. In comes some nice trebuchet hits. Oh, that was a massive hit. That was three massive hits right there. They don't like this. They don't like this one little bit. And they're pretty much as good as done. And I think we got them. Yep, we got them. Victory. Right, just mop them up. Make sure they don't make it back to the city, please. And also trebuchets probably stop firing at this point. Generals are actually really effective at chasing down enemy units, by the way. You should definitely forward deploy them to take care of that after the end of the battle. Because, yeah, if we just kind of zoom out here and speed things up, you'll see this guy does a magnificently effective job just chopping everything down. Even the strategist Kong Rong over here, he just took out that entire unit while it was fleeing. Alright, got about as much as I can possibly have got there. And let's see how the kills are looking. Yeah, they got very, very few kills. Handful of light taps. We should be able to easily heal that off. In fact, actually, if I use the replenishment option after the battle, I'll probably actually heal my horses up to a greater level than they started off in. So, uh, oh, that's a lot of money, though. That's a big old pile of money. No, take the replenishment. All right, Sao Sao might be just around the corner. And... No, he is not attacked. Good. And hello... What does Liu Dai want right now? Ooh, right now he really, really doesn't like me because of all the deals I've been doing with Yan Shu. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately we may just have to go and murder him. That's a shame. He's not declared war, though. He's just taken away our military access and he doesn't want to trade with me anymore. And that does really hurt me, so I'm very annoyed about that. And as soon as I'm done with all these stupid wars, I will be coming for some revenge. And uh, Liu Bei has declared war on... Right, I'm not sure who that is or where that is, but um, I was kind of hoping you might help more with the, you know, Gonsun Zhang situation. Then again, you have already fought one battle over there, so well done. In fact, when I say you fought one battle, you totally lost. Yeah, you lost that battle. You lost that battle a lot, but this guy's army is now looking vulnerable to me. Actually, this could be interesting. Guys, we might be up for, you know, launching a bit of a pursuit here and... I'm so sorry, I just accidentally entered your territory. My mistake. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Right. Now, where's the other army just gone? I don't know, actually. The other army has just disappeared. I didn't see where it went. Okay. This seems to be good. The situation with Gonsun Zhang appears to be resolving itself. Possibly, he's running very low on supplies right now. And maybe he's actually going up towards... Possibly... Dong, I'm not 100% sure. Do I want to actually have this army join up with this one? It's probably not a bad idea for me to do so. I mean, if I've got a full army here, now that this force is damaged, we might just be able to walk in there and basically take out Gonsun Zan. Though, bear in mind, uh, on the river, it would be an auto-resolve. There are no naval battles in this game. So, uh, I'd rather pick him off on the land if I could. Okay, on the plus side, there can't be much left here. We've got to be in good shape right here. Yeah, at this point, they've got themselves uh, 14 cavalry. And I can't actually demand surrender because there's no one left to demand surrender off because I wiped out all of their captains. Right, so we just need to uh, go and take out 14 cavalry then. Got it. Also, they've somehow grown an extra bastion artillery. I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. Alright, how are we doing here? Right now we've got ourselves, yeah, plenty of towers still operational. Bit of damage over here. Here we go, this is the approach. So, we've burnt down a fair bit of the town. Sorry about that, by the way. Ooh, this is a really nice defensible town. There is, uh, yeah, literally only one approach onto the plaza, and it's over a flipping drawbridge thing. Very nice. But not actually so nice, because, uh, yeah, if you happen to have trebuchets or something, which I do, ooh, Oh, yeah, this is actually perfect. I think we'll put a lovely trebuchet right here. 
And then we'll just move it forward. Hang on, you've got to get into the right position. There we go. Then we'll just move that forward. Uh, and we'll basically just start shooting them. Because I suspect they're just going to hide on the plaza. So yeah, this is a really interesting layout. Which is against a melee force. You've got a fantastic defense right here. Brilliant choke point. But if your enemy brings a giant pile of artillery and ranged units... Yeah, actually, it's a bit vulnerable. And as suspected, they are indeed just on the plaza. Now, do we have a shot immediately? Yes, we do. So we are just going to tear them apart. Right, I don't think we actually need to uh, get inside the city, actually. I think we can just uh, take these guys out with some long-range artillery. In fact, yeah, I think they've started, uh, they've started taking damage already. We've already killed four of them. Love it. Oh, they just broke. They just broke and we won. Marvelous, not a single casualty. Thank you, trebuchets. So I could just move in, but I'm kind of feeling like I need some money right now. It's level five. If I take it down a level, it'll still be level four. Though that will mean one of the buildings is destroyed, won't it? Yeah, because level five gets you the fourth building slot. Okay, occupy the place. That'll give us visibility as to what the hell's going on nearby. And when I say that, no, no it won't. Because we're very close by to the border. Okay. What do I want to do now? How does Sao Sao feel about peace? Because I feel like I've taken about half his empire off him so far. So, uh, he might be willing to just cut his losses. You dare show your face? But actually, he's not as negative as he might be. He is scared of me. The problem is I represent a major existential threat to him. So, uh, at this point, yeah, he's not keen on that. What if I wanted to vassalize you? And uh, why can I not vassalize you? Boo! Boo, I say. You can't do it. Ah, you need to be at peace. You can't actually force them to be a vassal in a war. Gotcha. And we don't know exactly what he owns right now, but I think this might actually be pretty much it, actually. Because all of this belongs to, yeah, that's Sun Jan. I'm not sure Sao Sao's got much left. Now, next thing's next. We need to, yeah, repair up all of these buildings immediately. You can't actually demolish them while they're damaged. You've got to repair them in order to demolish them in order to build something new. Which feels a bit backwards, but whatever. Ah, yes, that reminds me. Sao Sao's old capital, Chen. Yeah, we need to make some changes here. Because this place has got itself a flipping food trader. Which is, uh, yeah, 220 income for six food. Which is absolute total garbage. So we don't want that. I mean, even being massively increased by 135% by various peasantry bonuses. Food is just too valuable to trade away to a food trader. Especially as the alternative branch in the same tree actually gives you more food and also a fair bit of peasantry income. So, yeah, you're basically sacrificing 9 food for base 110 income. And that's so bad. That's just so, so bad. So, yeah, convert this place. It's going to cost a bit of money, but that means we'll have more food coming in. That'll be lovely. Other than that, you've got yourself a... Ah, you've got yourself a tax office, don't you? This is the, yeah, the tax collection chain. So, uh, we don't want one of those. Uh, admittedly, you do have the rather nice temple building right here. How much money does the tax collection actually make? Up to 240 in peasantry. You know what? In this city, that might actually just be worth it. Because I do already have the temple here, so... Uh, yeah, I could just say this place makes a giant pile of peasantry money, together with a giant pile of food, especially once I buy the farmland off Yan Shu. So this livestock farm belongs to this territory. He's also got a tool maker over here, so I could basically get my own supply of tools. I don't know how well guarded that is, however. I'll have to see about that, together with... Uh, yeah, the other bit of land actually belongs to Yan Shu over here. Hang on, is that... Ah, that's this bit of farmland as opposed to this bit of farmland. Fine, there's loads of farmland around here. I might want to try and get my hands on some of that. But if I did actually take both of these bits of farmland, I would be massively exposed to Yan Shu. That would be... That would be a concern, yes. Okay, one other thing to consider here. Is it time for me to swap out some units for better variants thereupon? Because using the swap function, I can basically, yeah, get all of the manpower into the next unit, or most of it anyway. Let's just consider that for the time being. The weird thing is, the G Militia actually do a fairly good job as general rounders. In terms of straight hitting power, G actually have base damage of 28 as opposed to the Spear Guard's base damage of only 8. Now, the Spear Guards do have more armor-piercing damage, but yeah, G are actually decent all-rounders. They'll actually do all right. Honestly, I'm pretty happy to just leave G Militia in for the time being. Honestly, if I wanted to splash a bit of money on a bit of an upgrade, uh, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm actually going to replace my weakest armor unit, even though it's rank 8, with a level 1 Fury of Bay High, who have the advantage of carrying a giant pile of ammunition. They've got a big old pile of ammunition next to normal crossbowmen. So yeah, normal crossbowmen have a base of 13 down in the bottom right there. These guys up to uh, 25, plus all the benefits of Kong Rong. Though admittedly, I'm not convinced by the Thunder of Janan. They just seem to be... Yeah, only a tiny, tiny bit better for a massive increase in cost. So, uh, Fury of Beihai, that'll do the job right there. Yeah, we'll get one of them, and they are expensive, but it will be nice to have one of them present. Also, due respect to Yan Shao's army, which has finally almost made it to the front with Cao Cao. So, uh, I'm not sure what they're planning to do now. Their supplies must be nearly... Ooh, hang on. Maybe not. You've brought yourself two strategists. Their supplies might basically be indefinite, except during winter. Right, interesting. So Yan Shao might be about to take a bit of territory all the way down here. Fascinating. Now we do have a problem with this Liu Dai situation, by the way, which is, uh, yeah. If he doesn't give me military access, then as a result of that, my troops have to go a very, very long way round. So, uh, Liu Dai, I know we don't like each other anymore, but... You need to chill the flip out or I need to murder you, okay? Oh no, he absolutely flipping hates the idea of military access. Fine, I think we're going to have to kill him. We're just going to have to kill him purely so I can actually get past him. So, a bit of a shame, I'd rather not, but that's what we're going to have to do. Right, uh, deploy armies into each other, please. There we go. So yeah, we've now got ourselves a massive number of troops there. It is, yeah, a good army. They all get on. They're all friends. Absolutely flipping love it. And yeah, we might actually get to see a vanguard in action soon. Lovely. Especially as this army is, oh, oh dear. Double strategist. Not a good idea. Though then again, double strategist backed up by this garrison. Not so bad, actually. And I still have no idea where the army up here just naffed off to, unfortunately. I just do not have visibility of that. Speaking of Yan Shao, the army that actually is my secret spy, that's on the move. So, not sure where that's going. If we're very lucky, I'd love for that to attack Gon Sun Zhang. That'd be great. By the way, if you're wondering why this guy over here is purple, he is technically my rival right now. The game just decided that Kong Rong and Zhang Yan were rivals. I'd have gone for Sao Sao myself, but whatever. And here's fun, by the way. Remember good old Tong, the person who actually took over Dong Zhao before the faction ceased to exist? She's now petitioning to join my court, which is very, very nice indeed. I mean, here's the thing. I know for a fact she's not a spy, because she chose to join this court because she had basically no option but to do so, and holds no ill will against me whatsoever. Now, she's absolutely terrible when it comes to fighting, but... As a strategist, is she actually any good whatsoever? She's fine if not spectacular. But here's the thing. I know I can trust her. That's the important thing. She is trustworthy. It is just a shame, yeah, she kind of sucks. Hang on, are you from the same faction, by the way? Yes, you're also from the same faction. And you might be more interesting, actually. Right, you are cunning. Plus 12. Committed, that's nice, dutiful, reduced penalty for desire for higher office, plus 10 satisfaction. Okay, now this, this is good actually, this is good stuff. Yes, you, you are welcome to come aboard. Because I do actually have a spare assignment slot right now, which is not bad at all. So he could go and stimulate markets or do an education program anywhere I wanted him to. Ah, now this is interesting. So this guy over here who I just raised as a champion, Jai Heng, he's actually not left his administrator position. So you can actually be an administrator and a general at the same time. Got it, I didn't realise that before. Ah, but here's the really interesting thing though. So, because I actually have, yeah, education programme and stimulate markets, I could have two people doing that job in the same city. So Tai Shan could have 75% income commerce off education and another 75 off yes, yes, do it, boom, Oh, Taishan is going to start making so much money. That's amazing. Ah, yes, yeah, so and my administrator, Sun Shao, has actually got better at his job as well. Spot on. Yeah, if I just boost his expertise, then his commandery can actually have, yeah, cheaper construction costs. Very, very nice indeed. Ah, but this one's nice. Plus five public order to administer commandery. Yeah, get that one in. Very, very nice indeed. And Shi Yi has also leveled up too. Lovely. Right now you are... 
You're doing the administration role, aren't you? Yes, you're doing the education program. Honestly, may as well just get his cunning moving up and up and up, so that's fine too. Though Shi Yi is starting to get annoyed because he thinks he should actually have a higher rank than he does. His stone monkey is not good enough to keep him happy. And don't forget, by the way, while I'm thinking about characters, uh, yeah, Grey Stallion for charge bonus to my Vanguard, because that's what Vanguards do, they charge right in. Sadly, though, he can't use the really, really nice Marshal G, because these guys can only use big two-handed weapons. Right, time to see if we can figure out where the hell Gonsun Zhang's gonna end up, because uh, if we could actually hit his wounded army, because right now it can't actually replenish in any way, we might be able to do enough damage to him that he's forced to make peace and pay us for the privilege. And on top of that, it's reform time, love the reform tree. Right, I need to think about what needs to be upgraded here, and not just in the sense of what I would like to have in terms of all the blue upgrades, but... Units. I need to unlock new, better units, damn it. Like, in particular, some elite shock infantry, like the Pearl Dragons up there. That'd be nice. Here we go. Slave mobilization will immediately give us... Ooh, the Axe Band. Good assault, good charge. Yeah, go on. Let's get that sorted out, because minus one construction time is not bad either. Unless... There's something we could really do with around here somewhere. But to be honest, I think we're okay. We don't really need new shock cavalry, though. Ooh, hello. What's that down there? That is... Ah, heavy G infantry. Yeah, that's what I want to start upgrading my G infantry to. Heavy G infantry. Very, very nice indeed. Where's medium G infantry? Because if that's close by... Yeah, that's peasant ban light spears. Not terrible, but... I'm guessing... That's the... That's Spear Warrior's medium spear. Where's the medium G? The medium G seem really good. Ah, there they are. Medium halberd infantry over here, then into heavy over there. Gotcha. And that would give us more military supplies, satisfaction up for champions, and in the meantime... It's a bit of a weak branch, to be honest. I don't need plus four military supplies. That's not great. No, I think I'll actually take the, the axe band. So we'll get that going, please. Lovely. So, axe band and construction time's down. All right, Gonsun Zhang has naffed off some... Oh, there it is. Right, okay, they showed back up again. They reappeared. And Yun Shao is now running south. He's close by to Cao Cao's South territory. That was... Hang on, who the hell was that down there? I've got to assume that's Cao Cao, right? And Jian Shu is willing to pay me... Quite a bit of money for military access. Why? Who do you want access to? It's not Dong Min. He's in the other direction. It's not likely to be the Han. It's not going to be Liu Dai. You've already got access to Liu Dai. But honestly, if you want to go kill him at this point, you can do, I suppose. Yeah, honestly, you know what? Go for it. Have fun. Some Me and you mostly trust each other. Attitude is very positive. Yeah, that's got to be one of their armies right there. And... Okay, also Liu Yao has just declared war on me. Where the hell are you? Right, he's down over here. We now border him and he just hates me because I'm big and a strategic threat. Gotcha. I honestly don't really need to escalate this to an alliance war. It's not really necessary. Liu Bei's nowhere around, so... No, I don't need to bother doing that. That's fine. And ooh, Tao Ying is finally expanding. I think they're gonna go and take that fishing port down there and finish up that province. Lovely. And oh, that's a concern. Liu Dai, you bloody cheeky magnificent bastard. Very clever. He's formed a coalition with Yun Shao. So now I can't go and murder him. And they got Zhang Yan in there too. Uh-oh. I can't help but notice that... Wait, what? Cao Cao just signed a peace deal with Yan Shao. This is... This is deeply concerning. All of this is not good. And also, while I'm resettling some people, my attendant comes upon an issue and requests my judgment... A couple living in the local area have refused to move, claiming this has been their home for generations. Now, there are multiple options, but you can only pick them if you've got the right traits. Because I'm not charitable or gracious, I can't just leave them be, which would actually mean, yeah, food production's down because I can't actually access some farming land, but local hero, public order up. I could just execute them. Bloody hell, that seems like a bit of a bad idea. So I've got no choice but to force them to move, so... Cost me a bit of money, but whatever. And I'm guessing that was supposed to be happening up in Dong Lai, because I believe that was the champion who was an administrator over there. Right, so, we've got issues now. We have got ourselves issues. In particular, yeah, this army right here is now laying siege to us. This is the first time we've been besieged by a major army. And I could see Gon Sun Zhang right flipping there. I have no choice but to go through Liu Dai's territory. But 
If that counts as a declaration of war, then that might now start pulling in Yan Shao, and I've got enough bloody wars going on simultaneously. Especially as, yeah, they've now got this army right here. This army worries me a bit. I kind of feel like what I want to do now is go down to this toolmaker, grab it, because that's part of this province, and then... Uh, Pretty much say, screw it, that's the end of the war now. I will pay you however much money it takes to make you go away. And the game's also letting me know Liu Bei is planning to launch another attack. Thank you very, very much, Liu Bei. So the problem is my relationship with Yan Shao is going to start, yeah, going down very quickly. Because he started pulling together a coalition of locals, Zhang Yan and Liu Dai. And I'm at war with both of them. In fact, Zhan Yan is, in fact, my rival for unclear reasons. So, uh, this is going to start getting nasty very, very fast indeed. In fact, now, uh, now I'm starting to regret the war against Cao Cao a bit, yes. Especially as I'm running out of people to trade with right now. I'm trading with everyone I can, but... Yan Shu... How would you potentially feel about joining into a big South of the River alliance? He's not going to be thrilled about it, but I might be able to pull him in. In which case, oh flip, we might be looking at a massive South of the River versus North of the River brawl here. Yeah, Yan Shu actually still likes me. Probably best we try and get him into my alliance before he gets pulled into Yan Shao's. Though actually Yan Shu and Yan Shao hate each other, so he'd probably be chill about this whole situation. Oh yeah, Liu Bei's happy to have him in, and actually, he's not even that negative. We can probably make this happen actually, but oh no, I can't bribe him. I can't actually bribe him in. Right, he needs to just want to do this by himself, which is unfortunate. Right, okay. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Also, apparently we're called the Alliance of the Darkening Moon, which is pretty good. Whoever named that, well done. And as for vassalizing Liu Dai just to get him out of the coalition, that's going to be very expensive. Like, ludicrously expensive. Also, hang the flip on here. Cao Cao, allies with Liu Dai. How long has that been a thing? Oh, flip. Yan Shao is allied with Cao Cao. Right, okay. So Cao Cao's done some very deft political maneuvering here. Okay, bear in mind, even though he hates this, yeah, actually, the negative on making this work is only minus 29 because balance of power shift. I've been winning a lot of battles. What I need to do is go over, take that one remaining blacksmith, and then I can probably just force him into a piece with enough money and food. I don't trust him, but I really feel like we need to start focusing our attention on the north here, because Yan Shao's gonna be a problem. Meanwhile, Liu Bei's just naffed off over here, and honestly, he's not achieving much. He's not achieving much at all. He's taken, yeah, the lumber yard over here. He's still got this here, trade ports. And I'm deeply worried that Yan Shu's going to attack him. Which would mean I now have war on every single front. That's... That's not good. None of this is looking good, actually. Alright, one step at a time here, one step at a time. I need to push this war more in my favour. And I can do that by moving my army over here and getting visibility of the toolmaker. So, uh, these guys, what have you actually got in terms of garrison? Right, not a huge amount to be honest. Let's just get over there, take it. That should hopefully give us a bit of visibility of this city over here. So, just wrap up this here province right now. Also, I've never actually fought a bat in a toolmaker before. Right, it is a proper settlement with walls and towers and whatever. So, it's not a bad thing to have right on the edge of the empire. Fine, that's good. Here we go. So, a bunch of rocks, bunch of entrances. A river divides up the town. Ah, I've seen this layout before somewhere. I can't remember where, but yeah, okay. Nothing too dramatic here. Probably the best approach is, yeah, right over here towards these guys. Because then, this tower doesn't have proper visibility of that one over there. So let's just draw everyone up here. And bear in mind, if we're just going to draw all our troops up here, then as a result of that, they'll draw all their troops up trying to defend against us. Which is good for me, because that means I can basically just start attacking them with mass trebuchets. Love it. The alternative is to try and take out the towers and then use my crossbowmen at the front, but trebuchets just don't really seem accurate enough to pull that one off, so... 
We'll leave it be for now, but it's an opportunity anyway. And don't forget, actually, the advantage my two arch units do have now is uh, flaming shot. So, uh, same ranged, uh, the attack rate is a lot slower, but it hurts morale. Not much more damage, though, because, yeah, it's more upfront damage, less armor-piercing damage. So, uh, actually, you're probably best most of the time not using that unless you're looking to cause a break. Anyway, start things off, see what we've actually got at the front door here, and, uh, interesting, there we go. So, let's just actually start putting some lovely fire on you guys. And actually, you know what? Let's actually use, uh, yeah, ranged explosion. That sounds kind of fun. So, armor-piercing range explosion too. Let's just put one normal shot in, then once we're done with that, let's go over to explosive mode. Explosive mode just kind of sounds hilarious. Especially as I actually do have 16 shots. So this is actually most of their infantry right now. So uh, this is going to be a bit of a slow process. Let's just turn off the UI. In come the explosives. Yeah, you know what? That seems to be doing a pretty good job setting some people on fire. Enjoying that very much so. So it's a bit on the slow side, but this is going to be their front line absolutely trashed. Then I can just send in the G militia and oh, that's good. That's doing some good work right there. I'd prefer a bit more of an earth-shattering kaboom, but it's not bad. In fact, actually, I'm surprised how accurate it's been. That's not bad at all. Ooh, we just hit the tower. Right, hang on. What does that actually do if you actually hit the tower right here? So that is fire damage, 48%. It's not actually burning down, but it does catch fire. And bloody hell, we just did a massive attack against you. Oh, we got very lucky with that massive strike. Beautiful. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure about this. I'd need to check in, but it feels to me like, oh, fire damage 100%. Their front line's starting to break. They just can't stand up to this. This is beautiful. And yeah, I think that tower is, uh, that tower's burning down at this point. I need to check this because the game doesn't actually give you an accuracy rating, but it feels to me like high-level trebuchets are more accurate. I'm not sure that's true, but... It feels like it's true. And when you do get those big hits in, oh, they really flip and feel it. Oh, those guys just went down from like over 200 to 180 in a single go. This is beautiful. Oh, that was 160 down to 90 in one hit. And I think they're pretty much ready to break immediately. Hoomin is right. This is just devastating. And those guys have broken too. More of them are just flipping fleeing at this point. In fact, they're having to call up. Oh no, those are the guys who broke. They're trying to come back. Oh, this is nice. Oh no, no, stop, 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 stop. Do not go forward into range of their towers, please. Do not. Right, last few shots. Let's see if we can just take out the, uh, the tower right here. Actually, no, fire damage does tick up. Beautiful. So fire damage is now at... 100% beautiful. Doesn't seem to be on fire, but there we go. Now it's on fire. And once fire damage... Ah, I think fire damage gets to 100%. Then that starts normal damage ticking up, I think is what I just saw there. Right, with those towers down, time to start moving up my crossbows. And the trebuchet has done beautiful work, but it is finally out of ammunition. Well done, you magnificent bastards. Oh, in come the fire arrows for the first time. And actually... They're just starting to, oh, they're just starting to break. That's really pretty, by the way. I'm um, liking the fire arrows. They are gorgeous. And uh, yeah, you just try and hold the gate. You just try and hold this gate. Good luck with that. Right, deploy some swords just to go and actually take care of the last of this beautiful. And yes, by the way, in case you don't know this, you can actually burn down forests in this game. If you've got any, like, fire arrows or fire pots or whatever, and the enemy's hiding in a forest, you can burn it down, which is really, really damn cool. Now, uh, yeah, ranged units, concentrate all firepower on the Sabre infantry, if you'd be so kind. I want those guys taken out at this point. And at this point, yeah, the enemy have got nothing left. In fact, they've got barely any swords left at all. Time for me to send forward the G militia and the spears. They are the best at taking out all of the cavalry. So you guys start going forward. Swords, you fall back. This isn't really where you should be. But yeah, they're not going to enjoy this one little bit. I don't think I even need to send in the G infantry. I think at this point, overwhelming fire arrows and crossbow bolts. They are just going to collapse long before the G reach them. Hang on, do the G even get a go? No, I don't think the G get a go. And instead, 
Yeah, at this point, we're just riding him down. I think that's got to be a lot, right? Who's even left? No one, as it turns out. Oh, yeah. My new fire arrows and the fury of Beihai, they're doing the job. Right, move straight in, occupy the place. Yet another territory falls to me. Sao Sao is running out of flipping land. Now, he does have a lumberyard somewhere. I don't know where that lumberyard actually is, but it's somewhere. Because, yeah, this is his last actual city. He's got, yeah, this. He's got the fishing port. He's got something, possibly over here. Ah, no, hang on, it might be over here, actually, just looking at the borders, it might be around here. Honestly, though, at this point, I think it's time to peace out against Sao Sao, because uh, I have got too many problems dotted around here, okay? Sao Sao worries me, but I need to get my army moving north, all right? We need to peace out with him, and it's gonna take a fair amount of money still to make it work, but... He's not got much food left, and he's still got a city that needs to actually be fed, so... Oh, Flip. He is really gonna refuse to actually make peace, isn't he? What if I was to throw a nice trade deal in? No, he hates the idea of a trade deal. Gotcha. However, he would be willing to do it in return for Yangzhou City. Now, that's interesting. That's actually very interesting indeed. I don't intend to do that, but... I could go and take his last city and then say, okay, I'll give it to you back if you peace out with me. Although at that point, I should probably just go and murder him, to be honest. I should just finish him off. Right, so this has not gone according to plan at all. He was supposed to have peaced out due to dying of starvation by now, but he's not doing that. He's not doing that at all. Right, go over to diplomatic status here, just to get a clearer view as to what's going on. The problem is, I'm not actually at war with Yan Shao right now, but Yan Shao is coalition buddies with Cao Cao, and Cao Cao could manipulate Yan Shao into attacking me pretty much any time. I'm just so nervous about attacking Liu Dai at this point, because uh, if I declare war on him in any way, then that means Yan Shao will be given the opportunity to declare war on me for free. Now that will bring in Liu Bei, who's got some great armies, but is not well positioned to help me out. I would be on the front line here, so... Uh, I need to figure out whether I want to trespass or not. This is a good army, and I think it could actually kill Gonsun Zhang's army. I think it genuinely could, but... Bigger problem right here. I've got a good army, but... Gonsun Zhang has a good army right there as well. Okay, what's the situation in this city right now? The wall strength is at 94% and falling. We have military supplies here, but they're going to run out soon, just because, yeah, we're under siege and I never invested in this. We have troops, but honestly, probably the best thing we can do is just get out there and fight him sooner rather than later. It's summer right now. Winter is no time soon. I could just wait, but attrition is a nightmare. I think we need to just go and make this happen. What have I got to play with here? I've got a garrison. I've got her troops right there. I've got half strength units of, yeah, the actual military garrison. And I've got this guy with almost a full stack of infantry. What am I lacking, if anything? Because I've got some decent amount of infantry. I've got not a bad amount of archers, actually. I've got some, but not much cavalry. I've got some spears. All things considered, I've got a decent, well-rounded army. He's got a decent vanguard, but I've got a decent champion. But uh-oh, hang on. He's got himself a G of the Imperial Guard elite weapon. Right, so the problem is my champion is potentially likely to lose to their vanguard. So he can just basically get in the front line and completely trash me. That's going to be a problem right there. My champion might just have to keep this guy busy. Yeah, he does 2,000 melee damage and 2,000 armor piercing damage with every swing of his weapon. My champion does 191 damage with 765 armor piercing. He's got a little bit more health, but... He is going to lose. He is going to lose hard. Right, so I've got no way to deal with a superb quality vanguard. That's... Oh, this is not good. This is... This is a real major concern right here. And there's no reinforcements on the way, because the reinforcements redeployed to go and deal with Gonsun Zhang, who's now floating around over here. Love it. Right, I've got no choice. I've just got to basically go straight through this territory and try and hunt down Gonsun Zhang and then see if maybe I can use that as leverage to force this guy into a piece. 
I can't make it there immediately, but screw it. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have taken military access away from me. Screw it. We need to make this happen. This just needs to be made to happen. I have more men than him. I'm just really damn scared of this here vanguard and his elite weaponry. Now, bear in mind, we do not want to actually charge forward at the beginning of the fight. We need to wait for our reinforcements to arrive uh, from the city over there somewhere. So, uh, just hide over here, just as close as we can to, yeah, where they're actually arriving from. There we go, that'll do. And then we can take care of this afterwards. The question is, are they going to try and charge at me immediately because they think they've got the advantage right now? Which they do. And reinforcements are on the field. They are moving forward. We have a bit of an uphill advantage. It's not much, but it's something. Right. Reinforcements piling in right now. You guys, quick as you like, please. Quick as you like. Um, where's Lady whats -her face There we go. Right, there's her. There's even more. Good, 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 good. We got more coming in. Everybody start moving forward. You guys uh, fall back over here to the actual forest. If they're going to walk at us, make sure they're walking the longest distance possible. Make sure we have got the high ground. It's one advantage we've got at least. Okay, is that everybody? I think that's everybody. Okay, everybody draw up in a vaguely sensible formation if you can. That'll do as a starting point. Question is, uh, do they want to duel? Uh, cannot duel out of range. But if I just survive... For 1 minute and 27 seconds, then actually, I get myself, yeah, a nice bonus to my retinue. Because I agreed to fight for them. This is worrying. Very worrying. And I don't want to do it when I'm too far from my army. Otherwise, problems. But, at the bare minimum, it will keep him from firing on me for a minute. That's good. And I've got plenty of time to position my cavalry. Because, uh, how much do they have? They've got... Two units of, ah, repeating crossbows. Yeah, these are faster, but they don't have armor piercing anymore. So, feels like most of that's on this side. Right, I should get my cavalry. In fact, actually, we've got a big hill up here. This is nice. Guys, reposition yourselves right up here onto this bit of hill. This will do right over here. We'll hold out over here, but cavalry, you guys, make your way way over here. We're going to see if we can start flanking all of those crossbows. If we can take those out, that'll give us the advantage. We've got about as much cavalry as them. Oh, there's the city. Sorry, I didn't realise that was right there. Of course it's going to be there. Why did you come from over here in the forest? I don't know. There's the city. Okay, bare minimum. We now know the city has a lovely big moat we can try and defend if need be. Okay, we're starting to get a bit on the closer side here. Yeah, that Lancer cavalry is not actually full strength. Got to be careful of that. So, next up, oh, I see what's going on here, I see what's going on, their cavalry is all over on that flank, their cavalry is all over on that flank, um, deploy spears to intercept, please, I want spears, and I want, in fact, you know what, get both of my spears over there, get them guarding that flank right now, everybody else reposition to compensate for their absence, right, so they're gonna throw all of their cavalry on that one flank right over there, I just need to, yeah, get round over here, keep my distance for the time being, and be ready to hit all of these units. Because actually, yeah, all their cavalry is going off ahead. Good, their cavalry can meet with my spears. My cavalry can do its job. It can just get on top of their ranged units. And, uh, speak of the devil, their ranged units are a little bit well protected, to be honest. And also, keep the lancers at the rear. Lancers don't have shields. They are a lot more vulnerable. So just get you guys round over here. Where's their guy? Okay, there's their guy right there. I could challenge him to a duel right now. And uh, he intends to kill or wound me. He is overwhelmingly strong. Don't do it immediately. Bare minimum, we are now opening fire. And I think we've got some of them a bit on the surprise side. Don't charge straight away. Okay, we're fine. Everything's under control. We got some spears ready to come and intercept their horses. And hang on. How many of these horses have shields? No shields. No shields. No flipping shields. Okay, good. These guys are all lancers. In which case, uh, open up on them with the archers. The archers will tear them apart. You guys, yeah, just basically turn over there. I want them taken out. Everybody else, just start focusing on whatever you can actually hit. We've got no crossbows yet, so... Uh, yeah, just don't worry about it. 
Okay, for the time being, the priority is just to, yeah, focus on taking out their ranged units. Stay out of the way. Because this, this is going to keep them distracted. It's going to keep them dancing. They don't know who they want to go for. And these guys are very, very nicely eating the arrows because they don't care about eating the arrows. Uh, what are you guys doing right now? Where are the other spears? The other spears are moving in. Those horses are not enjoying this one little bit. And in we come. Oh, they're deploying some of their own horses to deal with this. But it's going to be good enough for the time being. Back off, back off, back off. All this is doing is it's keeping them distracted, all right? It's keeping them distracted. Everybody over here, you chase these guys off. They should be in skirmish mode, right? Yep, they're breaking immediately. In which case, oh, they're about to send their vanguard right over there into my horses. And I do not want them over there. Uh, get my charging guys in. And just basically, yeah, get those lancers down. Straight in. Massive charge bonus. Beautiful. Sexy. Knocks them flip and flying. I want that vanguard out of there. I'm going to challenge him to a duel. He's just out of range. And... Do I actually want to fight Tim? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think this is going pretty well so far. Where are their horses? Their horses are coming in. These horses are coming in too. You focus your fire over. Actually, don't do that anymore. Those guys are starting to break. Right, the cavalry's been mostly disabled. My cavalry has basically been thrown away. But, look, it's kept half their army down at the bottom of the hill. This is actually fine. This is working. In fact, you know what? Time to take advantage of my charge bonuses. I think that's fine. Yeah, we've actually got some good charge bonuses on my sword infantry. Those get a charge bonus of like 100. These guys want to be charging down the hill to meet these guys. But leave it just for a second. Don't rush into it just yet. Wait for the last minute to launch the assault. Because right now my archers are still doing good quality work. I kind of want to pull this vanguard away. But is that the right thing to do? Do I want to engage with my champion right now? Right, Jai Heng, I'm so sorry. You are going to be massively outclassed, but it's going to pull him out of the way. And there we go. Challenging. He is now willing to engage in that duel. I'm so sorry. You are going to be annihilated. But that just pulled their guy away. And I need some of them out of here, please. You chase off these guys. You get over here, hit the repeated crossbowman. In comes another charge right there. They don't like that one little bit. You totally missed, you incompetent bastards. Right, I just need to survive. Oh, bloody hell, he's being slaughtered. He's being slaughtered. Use hamstring. Um, do you have the slow down his ability thing? You do, but I don't want you really exposed, to be perfectly honest. And I missed the chance to charge. That's fine. Um, do I want to actually get you involved in the front line right now? Not just yet. I think we're actually doing pretty well. Those guys are being torn apart. You guys are... Ah, oh, no. My cavalry. My cavalry is broken. But it's done good work. It's done very good work right now. And I just need to survive for 30 more seconds. This might be really dangerous, actually. But when I do, my forces get a massive morale boost. The front line can't break my front line. I need to survive for 20 more seconds. I am outmatched. Retreat might be best. Yeah, you're not kidding, but you've just got to survive for another 10 seconds. At that point, I will say you can retreat, all right? Just wait one second, because otherwise there's going to be a massive reduction in how effective your units are. Survive for five seconds, please. Just five seconds. Three, two, one, and... Yeah, you can now run away anytime you disengage, disengage, disengage. He honorably withdrew. Good. Now just basically naff off, please. Because his troops have actually decided that he did a good enough job. So that's okay. How are the horses doing? You guys, get over here. You guys, just chase down these guys, please. There's more coming in. My front line is holding, okay? And he has been badly wounded by that. He can't do as much. All right, we kept him busy. That was the important bit. And now, time to start wrapping them up. I've got spare units over on this flank. My archers are running out of ammunition. You guys, get over here and straight in the bag. They're not going to like that one little bit. They're now surrounded. And then we can start rolling them up, rolling them up, rolling them up. You guys, get on top of here. And men are out of ammunition. Right, so we've lost our main advantage over there. These guys are just chasing off these guys. They've got shields. They can take it. That's fine. Come on, guys. You know what? It's time to actually get my archers doing something. You, get up here. There we go. There we go. There we go. You, strategist. Congratulations. You're now getting involved. No, you're not. Now you're getting involved over there. 
everybody start wrapping them up everybody just get over there we need to throw everything we have got and just causing this front line to fall apart that's all we've got left at this point those guys are running off you guys Get round over here. Get forward. Hit these guys. The strategists aren't going to be doing a thing. This vanguard is still devastatingly powerful. And it looks like he's heading for the front line right now. But I think we can keep him bogged down long enough at this point. Get over here. And as for my strategist, she's stopping him using his big swishy ability. And here we go. We're actually doing all right here. Just watch out for her health because she's not really supposed to be in the front line. But their front line is not looking great actually. You guys, chase up these guys. You keep fighting over here. Those guys are not doing so hard, but they'll do okay for the time being. You guys, one of you go and murder her if you can. Rest of you, get over here. The front line is holding. Just flipping, just. It's very close. Their archers are now getting in the front line too. Right, in which case, send my archers in as reinforcements. They can fight if need be. Their strategy is hurting my ability to choose abilities too, but I'm not relying on abilities. That's fine. Now, my best unit is actually over here. This is the captain, so he's actually a little bit better. He's like medium sword infantry. So get him over here. Get him on top of that vanguard. You should be able to do a good job there. And don't let those horses get away. You keep fighting over here. What have I got left? Send the strategist to... I don't know. The strategist isn't doing a great job in general. You guys just get over. No, they're breaking. Right, everybody, if they're breaking, get back over here. Their vanguard doesn't like it. Their vanguard's not happy. You guys get over here. You guys be ready to hit these guys. I want them to break. So we've got a strategist coming in. We've got spears coming in from the side. Spears don't work that well, but they'll do something. They're shaken. They're losing currently. And their vanguard is withdrawing. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Sadly, I cannot pursue. My cavalry has already naffed off. So in which case, now it's just time to surround and murder. We've won, but that's, yeah, quite a lot of losses. Luckily, most of it's garrison, and they shouldn't have the ability to actually follow up with a second attack. So uh, this is good. We're going to chase them back to their territory. Good stuff. No, the vanguard's recovered. Good, 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 good. But... Looks to me like this is the end. They don't have anything left at this point. Right, last few holdouts over here. Sending my strategist right into their back. She may be a strategist, but she can still do the job when it counts. Just to push them over into breaking. Vanguard's breaking once again. Now I can just use my infantry to swamp their strategists. This is it. This is it. They're done. Right, we've won. Bloody hell, though. That was... That was tight. And I think that's your lot. Good. Good, 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 good. Right, so, we won at the garrison will be able to recover. Taishan is safe for now. Now, have we captured anyone? We have as well. So, what have we got here? Yu Quin Shan. She is actually friends with Hua Tuo, who I don't know who that actually is, but could employ her immediately. Superstitious, composed, vain, unspectacular, to be honest. But apparently she hates her old faction. She would be willing to join up to mine. The problem is, yeah, with Vayne, she actually has minus four cunning. Which is uh, not spectacular. But bear in mind, because she's got friends, if I execute her, whoever that is, they're going to be really annoyed. She's not very useful, so I'm just going to actually let her go. She is to be released. And as for the captured troops, honestly, I kind of feel like I need some money right now. So I'm just going to ransom them. So there we go. He is now naffing off over the river, or he's going to try to at least. Do I want to try and pursue? I'm not in a position to do that right now. And also, poor old Tai Shan took a lot of damage during that siege, so the ransom funds can pretty much just pay for the repairs. And also, we just desperately need more money from my best settlement. So, uh, yeah, let's just get more and more trading going on in Tai Shan. That's the money-making province, and I need it to keep doing that. Kong Rong's still down south over here by the toolmaker. I wouldn't mind taking this city if I can, but I suspect that's where Cao Cao's army is going to be. And they are sending a force in this direction. I should be able to take that though, it's not a massive force. Now, Gon Sun Zhang, in theory, oh you are really up for peace right now because I've just trashed one of your armies. That's probably for the best in that case, but... I might be able to get more out of you if I can actually chase down your main army over there. Alright, time to see what happens next because I suspect things are starting to go wrong very fast. 
Right, Gonson Zhang is probably just making a run for Dong. And, ah, his other troops actually... Yeah, I figured that might be about to happen. So, Yun Shao is now at war with me. Yeah, Liu Bei, I definitely need you in on that one, actually. And Kong Rong and Yan Shao are now officially rivals. Marvellous. So, Yan Shao is now just chilling out right there, which is not good at all. He's now just encamped inside my territory. And also, yep, yeah, Liu Yao, who I don't really care about, he's just floating around there. I've lost visibility of where Cao Cao's army is. That's somewhere as well. Yan Shu is refusing to actually cooperate with me in any way whatsoever. So that's nice. Now my main army, yeah, is making very slow progress here, unfortunately. This force is... It's gotta be low on supplies soon. My force over here is recovering nicely. This force is uh, still badly damaged. I could just go in and finish these guys off, you know. So yeah, I'm just talking about six good quality infantry... Taking on how many very flimsy infantry? One good unit of crossbows, though. That's a bit of a problem. The rest of it hasn't regrouped yet. And my champion could just assassinate that guy. Well, I say he could. He probably couldn't. He's still pretty weak, too. Okay, so in short, everything's a bit of a mess. And I no longer have the time or anything to actually get on with pursuing Gon Sun Zhang. That's absolutely fine. Right. Me and you, we need to get some peace going on right now. And if you're willing to pay for it, even better. Yeah, there we go. 3,000 gold in war reparations. That'll do the job right there. Now, the thing is, me and you are actually neutral right now. And I'm guessing... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Come back here. Me and you... I know we've just been fighting, but... I feel like we've actually got ourselves a bit of a common enemy here. Now, first up, let's non-aggression pact each other. I'm going to start building up a relationship with Gong Sun Zhang. Because, plain and simple, if Gong Sun Zhang wants to basically expand against anybody, it has to be Yun Chao. If he can be made to declare war against Yun Chao by leaving him no other opportunities, then all of a sudden, we might be in a better position. So, I'm willing to pay you a bit of money back in order to make that happen. Okay, there we go. We got ourselves a peace treaty and a non-aggression pact. Me and Gon Sun Zhang, no longer at war with each other. So that at least is one force we do not need to worry about anymore. And that just leaves Cao Cao, Liu Yao down over here, and Yan Shao up here. Meaning Kong Rong is probably going to get, yeah, stuck in an extended fight down in the south for quite some time. And we just need more troops. We just desperately need more troops. This force up here needs to become a proper army. I might be able to push Yan Shao into peace if I can basically just kick his ass in a couple of locations. And uh, now me and Gon Sun Zhang are friends. Well, not really friends, but you know, not enemies. If I could maybe, say, uh, take a territory or two, uh, get a border going on with him, maybe, just maybe, I can bring him into this war. Oh yes, and this force absolutely needs to die because it is dangerously, terrifyingly close to a bunch of livestock farms that can't possibly defend themselves. In fact, I think we should just go and do that immediately. If we're about to lose the Toolmaker, we're gonna lose the Toolmaker. That's fine. Kong Rong, I think, is about to be very busy. Very, very busy indeed. So, join us next time, ladies and gentlemen, as we join battle against Yan Shao for the very first time. They have drawn up inside our territory, but we've got ourselves a trebuchet. We can pelt them out. We've got to, yeah, basically beat back a few people into surrender. Bloody hell, this is gonna get... This is gonna get nasty, and... Uh, I wonder if Sun Jan might be willing to do something. We'll have to have a chat with him as well, see how he feels about us, but... Potentially, Gon Sun Zhang and Sun Jan might be willing to play ball with me here. It's the best bet I've got right now, ladies and gentlemen, because... Uh, this could start getting out of hand very quickly, as Yan Shu is apparently gonna refuse to play ball with our alliance. And if Liu Bei would like to show up to help out, That'd be great, because historically, that's kind of what Liu Bei does. He shows up to help Kong Rong when Kong Rong's in trouble. So, we'll see if that happens in our game too, ladies and gentlemen, very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Total War Three Kingdoms. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings! Elephants in the rear!